I am Dr. Jeshri Singh, Senior Faculty, Department of English, HOD, from Bhopal Nobles PG College, affiliated to Mohanlal Sukhari University, Udaipur. Today, I am going to deliver the lecture on the emotions of migration. There are certain terminologies that have to be cleared before we proceed with our title of the topic. The first terminology is emotionology. The study of attitudes and standards that a society encourages in human conduct. Emotions, a complex set of interactions among subjective and objective factors. Migration, it relates to people moving from a place to live to another place for a while, changing a platform from an environment to another one. Emotional history of migration, it takes place across borders and boundaries. Their settlement and memories become significant. Their experience covers migration, emotions and belonging. Migrants think and speak about their choice, pain, loss, separation and misery. To interrogate the human displacements across borders and rupture in relationships, that would be my first objective to elaborate on the topic. The second objective would be to synthesize the migrants' memories and emotional loss. To understand mobility in terms of the social structure and cultural process. Differentiate Western psyche with Indian psyche as regards emotional history of migrants. The discussion on this topic has to be dealt with certain points. That how emotion has been psychologically playing the role in one's life. It is a childlike activity for Indian migrants as well as for those who are left behind in their homeland. Migration is mostly an economic activity in Indian context. It encourages cultural inflow and cultural outflow. It also generates loss of belongingness for the homeland and loss of identity in the foreign land. Migration to abroad indeed brings good feel factor, but there is emotional crisis of self and nationality. Because of Videsya Bhav, lots of narratives, memoirs, letters and travelogues have been written to search roots of India in their imagination and it is a catharsis of their wings of flight. My first observation that had been taken from the narratives of by Jhumpal Hari, her novel The Namesake. Jhumpal Hari is an Indo-American who takes the Ganguly family from their tradition-bound life in Calcutta through their fraught transformation into America. On the heels of their arranged wedding, Ashok and Ashima Ganguly settle together in Cambridge, Massachusetts. His wife, Ashima Ganguly, resists all things American and binds for her family. There, in America, the immigrants face cultural dilemma in the foreign system and gradually imbibe the cultural ways of the host country too. Their own children, groomed to be bilingual and bicultural, face cultural dilemmas and displacement more. Another novel written by Ramav Ispinath, The Swinging Bridge. She is an Indo-Canadian writer, a very upcoming and established writer and a bestseller too in some way, is a move, writes about a moving story of race and displacement. It carries the reader effortlessly from 19th century India to the cane fields of Trinidad and the contemporary urban centers of North America. Mona, a young Indo-Caribbean woman who grew up in Canada and falls in love with Negro but not, dis but not liked by her parents, so she confronts not only her turbulent past but the secrets of a winding family history that began on the Indian continent almost two centuries ago. The novel explores the Caribbean life, the immigrant experience, that is marked by violence and shame, but also by love and respect. Because when they were in Canada, after they moved from Trinidad to Canada, there they felt that they have come to a land where they can be again together and be freed from all racism and segregation. These immigrants, they have sensitized cultural counterpoint. One of the NRI, Vijay Lakshmi Chauhan, she is from Rajasthan and she immigrated with her husband 
to America and there she is now a professor. She has written the no uh, short story and as well as a novella, Palm Grenade Dreams. In one of the stories titled In the City of Stocks and Touch Line, she tells the truth that lie behind the human world's memories, reveries and subsequent emptiness. The stories unveil that every individual makes his own nest with emotions to secure oneself from likes, dislikes, distance, intimacy, lost and found. For example, in the city of Stokes, there was a lady, she was an Indian, she moved with her husband to America, but she could not settle with the cultural counterpoints in America. Finally, she was left alone and her alienation led her to be with the choice of another partner. But that another partner was suffering from cancer and then she realized that what's the meaning of relationship and love. Another story, the touchline. It's a very pathetic, poignant story of an old lady who is living in India and her daughter and son both are in America. They want her to move to America with them. But that old lady, their mother, she denies, she refuses because she doesn't want to get away from her roots. And in this way, this story touches the heart of every Indian or every reader. So the question is, how do the, how do the immigrants can redeem themselves from bondage? Can it be love or intimacy? Can it be belongingness or uprootedness? Is it to sever from past or to settle scores with present situation? There is another travelogue, Emotions of an Expatriate. It is Vidyadhar Naipaul. It's a travelogue detailing Naipaul's trip through India in the early 60s. It's a pessimistic work and it conveys the acute sense of disillusionment which the author experiences on his first visit to his ancestral land. Because this ancestral land, India, was in his resting image. It was in his imagination, which he had developed or formed through the articles, through the items that his grandparents carried as indentured laborers to Trinidad. And those things that he saw while during his childhood, they really developed his imagination, a fantasy, an illusion regarding India. But when he visited as an expatriate, he felt that he is feel, finding something outrageous. So, but he did return to his old village, Dube, in Uttar Pradesh. There he found all love and affection. But unfortunately, he could not stay longer and he had to return to his land, foreign land, and that was his flight from his imagination. And in this way, India remained an area of darkness as always it was in his mind. Thus, emotional history of migration tells the stories of remembrance, missing, searching, and sometimes it evokes resilient attitude towards one's own and towards the place they live. So I want to convey that the migration, it's indeed may be an escape, it may be a... Uh, move to a, towards a promising land, but somewhere it left its deep impact on the psyche of the uh, people who move to other land. Thank you.